So hi, I'm John from, uh, from the Foundry, Product Manager for Nuke. So I'm just going to tell you a bit about what's going on at NAB for Nuke this year. Um, we released Nuke 7 last year, the end of last year. Nuke 7 has got lots of great new features like GPU acceleration, real-time playback, um, updates to the 3D workspace, like being able to build models within Nuke. Lots of really great things in, in that version. Um, we've also released a brand new update to Nuke 7 just at NAB on Monday called uh, Nuke 7 V6, and that's got a great new tool in it called Nuke Assist. So Nuke Assist, you get two free with every Nuke X, and what it is, is a cut down version of Nuke that is available for paint and rotor. So you get all your paint tools, all your rotor tools, plus 2D tracking, plus planar tracking, plus a few other tools to help you do uh, paint and rotor. So you get two of those free with every Nuke X, um, it just looks like a basic, uh, exactly the same as your, your Nuke that you're familiar with, but it has these extra tools for Paint and Roto for free. Um, in addition to that, you can open any existing Nuke script in that Nuke Assist and do your work in context. So the, those nodes that are not available in Nuke uh, Assist will render, but you can't change them. Okay? We've also got, and this is really exciting too, for the first time, optical flares, which are very uh, familiar plug-in to After Effects users. Optical flares from Video Copilot is now available for Nuke, uh, for Nuke 7, uh, just announced at this show as well. So you can go and buy that now from, from uh, Video Copilot. So that's really cool. We've also got a bit of a tech preview that we're doing of the next version of Nuke and Hero. So that's coming up. Um, the really exciting about part about this is we can now embed compositing directly inside Hero. So you can have compositing right inside your Hero workspace, chop and change between the timeline and compositing. So that's really good. I guess I should talk about Hero as well. We have a, a new release of Hero 2, Hero 1.7, available again as of Monday, I believe. I probably shouldn't talk off camera, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, so here at 1.7, the really exciting thing about that is it's really bringing editorial to, to um, or coming of age for the editing tools within Hero. You can really do your great editing in there. You've got modal editing tools, got lots of other editing tools that will be familiar, familiar to editors. Um, there's lots of other updates to performance and so on in there too. So here at 1.7 available now too. So that's about it from me. Thank you very much for your time. Hope you enjoy NAB. Hi, DVE Asia. How's it going? My name is Deke Kincaid. I work for the Foundry at the uh, Los Angeles office in sunny California. Um, today I'm going to be showing you Assist for Nuke X. So what that is, is it's a, a smaller version of Nuke. And what we do is uh, we took out a lot of the tools in Nuke X and we give you a, a, a version of Nuke that just lets you do, for example, Roto and Roto Paint and tracking and all your kind of a, you know, basic work, work that you would give off to uh, a, a junior artist or a mid-level artist so they, they can use and, and continue to work with your Nuke artists as you go along. So today I'll be actually be uh, walking you through that and uh, give you a little overview. So I'm uh, showing off uh, Assist for NukeX here. So as you can tell, you can see a bunch of these nodes actually have uh, red outlines around them. So what, that, what that's showing is these are actually nodes that uh, are coming from an external script from uh, NukeX. And you'll see a couple of these other nodes down here that are actually the roto nodes. And these are, do not have a red outline. So these are the basic nodes that work inside a Nuke. So I can go in and I can take an existing setup. For example, I have this uh, green screen composite. I can go in and I can have an, an existing key in here, but then I can go in and add my own uh, roto. So I can go in here and I can add a roto node and do, for example, do an inside mat for this character. And I can continue to work as a roto and paint artist inside of my uh, assist for nuke. So if you go and look at my menu on the left side, you'll see it looks very similar to Nuke, but there's less nodes. So here I have the, uh, the read nodes and color nodes. Under the Roto, I have Roto, Roto Paint. I have a few time nodes, channel, color. But it's, just a, it's, it's, it's very similar to the regular Nuke, but it's just like a slightly modified version. Hello, 
uh, my name is Greg Brown with The Foundry, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Moto 701, one of the new products that has been incorporated into The Foundry product line. Uh, Moto 701 is a full featured animation package, and recently we just added a new feature, particles, and that's really what's rounded out our feature set as a whole. Moto is capable of modeling, sculpting, texturing, lighting, rendering, shading, and even you know very high end effects that used to be uh, specific to you know uh, sole applications like retopology. Moto actually allows you to do a wide variety of things all within one package, but one of the things I want to articulate about it is we don't want to isolate you to our tool and our tool only. And this is why we uh, merged with the Foundry last year, is that Moto plays nice with other applications, and this articulates another important point about Moto, is that within Moto, what makes Moto special is our architecture, the way the software was designed. Moto is designed so that everything inside Moto plays well with everything else. Oftentimes, many 3D applications, just to get the application completed and rounded out, they you know, do all sorts of hacks and tricks to try and make, say for instance, hair rendering work or something like that. In Moto, this is not the case. Everything in Moto plays well with everything else in Moto, and this is a very rare thing in 3D applications in general. Now, we're very excited, um, the, the makers of Moto are very excited in the connection with the Foundry, because the Foundry has a long-standing reputation in the VFX industry. So now we've been tailoring our program to work with all the rest of the Foundry products, and using Moto 701 in conjunction with all the Foundry products is going to extend your capabilities in ways that you did not, you were not capable prior. So thank you very much for uh, listening to what we have to say about it. I want you to use Moto because it's an exceptional application. Keep your eye on us at luxology.com, L-U-X-O-L-O-G-Y.com, and thefoundry.co.uk. I'm sure they're going to see very exciting things to come uh, with 701, which is out now. And in the future, I can promise you it's going to be amazing. I want to show you a couple, a select few, of some of the new features I like in Moto 701. Um, Moto 701 has a lot of new additions, and like I said, this is just a select few of them. And in this case, I want to show you some modeling specific features. And um, I'm going to switch over to another version of this mesh you see here. That was, of course, created in Moto. And this, er this mesh, of course, has a gigantic hole inside of its head. And, uh, you know, Moto has some new features that will make it much easier for you to fill large spaces of geometry and, um, and actually interpret the geometry that is already there to make sure that you have to do less modeling, spend less time creating topology. All right, so I have these two edges selected, and all I want to do is come over to my bridge tool and bridge auto connect. Make sure auto connection is on. This is the new feature in 701. You can see it actually automatically finds how many spans there are and adds them and joins them appropriately. If I turn auto connection off, you can see what happens. You can, of course, tweak and tune the um, tool itself, you know, in Moto without auto connection and make it work for you. Um, but it's very, you know, very difficult, not an easy process. So just go ahead and use auto connection to fill in large spaces of geometry and also interpret your already existing edge flow. So pretty sweet stuff. Now I'm going to show off another nice to new tool in 701. That being the contour tool. With this tool, you can just click and drag out right in your 3D viewport, creating contours and editing those contours. And these contours will aid the process of generating geometry um, quickly and easily with nice, clean topology as well. All right, zoom right in here. Oops. Use the bridge tool with this new feature called Continuous Bridge and click in the viewport and you can see that we've generated all this nice topology and as we click and drag out we add more spans and we can come right in here into the curve options and add more rows as well. Um, so a lot of nice control interactively in your viewport and another nice easy way to create topology in Moto 701. Moto 701's Convert to Multi-Resolution feature 
allows for an extraordinary amount of control and high detail sculpts to be transferred back and forth between moto and external sculpting applications. Um, as you can see here, I have a vector displacement on top of what is a very low resolution mesh. And the nice thing about vector displacements is how accurately they represent details, but the big drawback to them is that they produce UV seams in pretty much every application they're implemented. Um, but this uh, new feature in 701 called Convert to Multi-Resolution kind of solves this problem for us and allows us to fix this one drawback to using vector displacements. Um, so once this is converted, we'll have a 5 million polygon mesh that we can sculpt on top of and just kind of hop right in and use uh, the smooth brush with symmetry on and just go in and smooth out these nasty UV seams and, uh, and all the areas that are relevant. And once you're done, have a mesh that looks about like this. It takes about all of 10 minutes to go through getting rid of those seams. And uh, you know, at this point, you can continue even building out extra mesh items on top of this. And so um, for an example of that, I will go ahead and turn on a displacement layer that I sculpted inside of Modo. It's an entirely separate um, hair mesh that I sculpted and then baked into the surface as a displacement map. And so you can see right there um, this hair that I've sculpted into my character being displaced right on top of the surface. And um, this mesh, of course, is still sculptable despite the hair being added in. So um, the s feature in 701, Convert to Multi-Resolution, allows for a tremendous amount of control in a variety of ways. So hope you guys enjoy this one. I've been using Moto 701's tool set to kind of uh, expand on a lot of different aspects of 3D. Um, I'm using the Dynamics Engine to drop rocks into place um, inside this kind of wall container to build up like kind of highly organic, um, non-repeating, varying wall textures and uh, wall objects, I suppose. And so I just you do that by instancing a whole bunch of different individual rocks uh, and dropping them into place so they fall into um, an arrangement that is non-repetitive even though it's just a selection of 14 different rocks. Now let me come on over to a later portion of this scene where I've gone ahead and I've created uh, things like you know beams to surround it and I've even baked down all those rocks into a displaced wall surface. And so you see as I, I zoom in I've got all these wonderful details and in fact I even went so far as to um, create a variety of texture types, like for instance one with the lighting even baked down from the scene. So you can see even with global illumination based lighting we have a beautiful displaced wall texture that's very lightweight and sourced from 70 million polygons of detail and each one of these rocks had a 4096 map and we baked this down into one single 4096 map and gotten a huge amount of absolutely beautiful detail. Um, you can even take this further, um, say for instance, if you wanted to edit this more so, you can come over to the Sculpt Tools, Utilities, and convert this to multi-resolution. What level are we at now? Five. Okay. So convert to multi-resolution and set that at five, which uh, we could definitely go higher, but that's a reasonable amount. We're going to have you know, something around three and a half million polygons for that object. And we grab our Sculpt Tools and continue editing this wall mesh using multi-resolution sculpting and uh, pretty kind of pretty crazy when you think about that so 701 adds a lot of versatility to I mean pretty much any any industry you work in I mean you can definitely see how tools like this when combined in such an interesting manner can be utilized in very interesting ways